رحمت الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters Today is the almost the last part of the 8th of Dhul Hijjah 1443 years after the Hijjah of the Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with the 18th of July 2021 and today we are going to talk about the innovation of Ta'rif or the Bid'atu Ta'rif on the day of Arafah. Before we go to the discussion of this uh, innovation which will teach us a lot of things uh, uh, specifically how to protect ourselves from falling into uh, innovations that many people when they are not careful they fall into. First of all let's try to learn from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu what is special about the day of Arafah. Day of Arafah is a day of Eid. It's one of the days of the Eid, which is one of the occasion of celebration uh, during the the season of Eid al-Adha. Of course, the tenth is the main day, which is known as the Eid al-Adha, the Yom al-Hajj al-Akbar. Uh, but also the ninth, along with tenth and eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, which are known as the days of Mina. These are the five days of the celebration on the occasion of Eid al-Adha. Second, it is one of the days of the best days of the year. So deeds on the day of Arafah, all types of deeds, obligatory, optional, are more beloved to Allah, purer to Allah, better and more rewarding, inshallah ta'ala. The deeds which we do any other day, uh, we should try to do on uh, the 9th of the Hijjah too. It's one of the days uh, uh, of the Hajj. It's one of the most important days of the Hajj. Because the Prophet said, Al Hajj Arafah. So if somebody misses uh, to uh, station themselves in Arafah during the evening of Arafah, uh, uh, then they will have no Hajj. Also, it is one of the days of the sacred months of Dhul Hijjah, because Dhul Hijjah is one of the sacred months. So it's one of the days of the sacred months of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's also one of the days of the months of Hajj. So all of these are the general virtue of the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. On this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the great verse Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina after Salat al-Asr while the Prophet sallallahu was in Al-Arafah. Uh, fasting and this hadith is very authentic in Bukhari and others. Fasting this day is for the non-Hajjis, those who are not at Hajj. Fasting is highly recommended, not obligatory, highly recommended. The reward of that is the sins of the previous year and the next year being forgiven as we have the narration in Sahih Muslim and it is one of the days the Prophet Sallallahu said that and this hadith in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Mother, our mother Aisha that on this day this is the one of the days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees many of his slaves the largest number of slaves he frees on the, on the day of Arafah and he draws near to them and reveals about them or boasts about them to the angels so this hadith is talking about not all the people on the day of Arafah, only the Hujjaj on the day of Arafah. Those who are at Hajj in Al Arafah, these are the people whom this hadith or this virtue specifically uh, and only refers to. So these are basically what we have authentic about the day of Arafah. For those of us who are not going for Hajj, the only legislated action during this day is the fasting. There is nothing else we can do mashru and legislated because it is Arafah. For example, can we do some special reading of Quran because it is day of Arafah? Can we do some special charity because it is day of Arafah? Can we do some special dua because it is day of Arafah? The answer is no, we cannot. But can we do this general reading like any other day of reading of Quran? Can we do some general charity like we do any other day? Yes, all of this is allowed. But to say I'm going to read Quran because it is the day of Arafah, this will be an innovation. Why? Because the Prophet did not legislate reading Quran for the day of Arafah. 
he kept the legislation open general for any deed to be done so nobody has the authority now to specify a specific deed anybody specifies a specific deed on this day for a specific reason they must have an evidence a, an authentic evidence from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so now what about the dua on the day of Arafah uh, we need to discuss this because we are going to talk about the bid'ah of ta'rif and it is connected to this uh, there is the hadith which says afdalu dua dua yawm yarafa or khayru dua dua yawm yarafa this hadith is reported by imam malik in his muatta but this this narration is mursal so it is not authentic and the narration of tirmidhi when imam tirmidhi reported the hadith of uh, Amr ibn Shu'aib an Abihi and Jaddihi which is basically the, the Sahabi uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As anhu. he reported that the Prophet sallallahu said and the Nabiya sallallahu qal khayru dua dua yawm arafa the best dua of the of, uh, uh, best dua is a dua done on the yawm arafa wa khayru ma kultu ana wa nabiyun and the best thing that I have said or the prophets have said min qabli before me la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir this hadith is very famously uh, quoted uh, especially for the the day of arafa uh, those who are in the Hajj. قال إمام التلميذ أفرادس يسأل قال هذا حديث حسن غريب من هذا الوجه وحمد بن أبي حميد وهو محمد بن أبي حميد وهو أبو إبراهيم الأنصاري المدني وليس هو بالقوي عند أهل الحديث. So then one of the narrator Hamad ibn Abi Humayd is the ilah of this chain that he is not he is being he is spoken against he is not a strong narrator uh, uh, so he is spoken against and this is one of the reason this hadith has been graded as weak by many of the scholars of the hadith however some of the ulama of the hadith like imam al-albani and others they have considered this hadith to be uh, acceptable and this is because of the shawahid and so on and so forth even if uh, we accept this uh, uh, you know uh, tashi or its authentication from the great ulama of the hadith this narration Khairud Dua or Afdalud Dua, if it is, can be safely attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu this is not general for all the people. This is like the hadith of Imam Muslim, which is uh, reported by uh, our mother Aisha, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, 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 that uh, 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 there is no day when God, Allah sets free more servants from hellfire than the day of Arafah. He draws near then praises the people to the angels boasts about them saying what do these people want like that narration which is authentic these narrations if it is authentic they only refer to the people who are on the Yom Arafah on the day of Yom Arafah they are at Arafah however there are some scholars they said no it is Am it also refers to others than those who are in the Hajj but what looks to be correct is this hadith is referring only to the people who are at the Hajj on the day of Arafah. So, there is no specific dua that can be legislated for the day of Arafah. So, somebody cannot say, I'm going to make a specially dua because it is the day of Arafah. Should not be correct. One of the reasons is because we have mentioned there is a illa in the hadith. Second, if the hadith, even if it is considered it to be authentic, this is not referring to us. This is referring to the people who are at the Hajj, our brothers and sisters who are at the Hajj. Alhamdulillah, today is the Yom Tarwiyah, the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Mina, and the people have already started the Hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write for us lots of Hajj and Umrah uh, uh, repeatedly until we die and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be called bin Salim. Now let's talk about the main subject today, which is the Bid'a or the innovation of something called a ta'rif from Arafah at ta'rif one of the innovation that was done by some of the people in the past and this is also ongoing in different ways uh, in our time too maybe in many places still they do it but in different ways uh, uh, is that they the people local people in their local town what they do is on the day of Arafah they used to wear the ihram or even not wear the ihram they would go to the masjid and stay in the masjid from asr to maghrib making dua standing and making dua 
facing the Qibla and making dua like the way the Hujjaj do make dua on the day of Arafah in Al Arafah so this is known as the at Ta'rif Al Al Mu'arraf Ta'rif Al Al Mu'arraf and this is of course a great innovation because this specific act of devoting a certain time to make dua following the tradition of the Hujjaj was not done by the Prophet ﷺ, was not done by any of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. But this started very, very early in the history of Islam, in the time of a Tabi'i. We have the authentic narration, and this is from the book of Imam uh, Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Waddah ibn Rab ibn ba, ibn Burai, I think Al Burai Al Bari, Al Barwani Al Qurtubi. Al Marwani Al Qurtubi, he died in the year 287 Hijri, he was born in the year 199 Hijri. He has a book which is known as the book of Kitabul Bida'ah Wa Nahiyu Anha, the book of the Bida'ah and the uh, prohibition against the innovation. In the, he has a chapter there in the book which is called Karahiyatu Ijtima'in Nas Ashiyatu Arafa the the disliking or the you know the prohibition of gathering of the people in the evening of the Arafa. And he's talking about gathering of which type of people? The people who are not in the Hajj. Who are not in the Hajj. He reports on the authority of Abu Hafs al Madani and uh, this book is published with tahqiq of Sheikh, uh, one of the muhaqqiq, his name is Amr Abdul uh, Muni'im Salim. Uh, the Sheikh, he graded this hadith, that Isnad is Hassan, uh, up to Abu Hafs al-Madani. He said, Abu Hafs al-Madani said that people gathered on the day of Arafah in the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They started supplicating after the Salat al-Asr. فَخَرَجَ نَافِعِ مَوْلَى إِبْنُ عَمَرِ مَوْلَى إِبْنُ عَمَرِ نَافِعِ This is the famous Tabi'i نَافِعِ مَوْلَى إِبْنُ عَمَرِ The freed slave of Umar Sorry, free slave of Abdullah ibn Umar Ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar He said فَقَالِ أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O people إِنَّ الَّذِي أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ بِدَعَ What you are upon Meaning what you are doing is an innovation وَلَيْسَ بِسُنَّةِ It is not sunnah إِنَّا أَدْرَقْنَا النَّاسِ We saw the people And he's talking about the sahaba The scholars وَلَا يَسْمَعُونَ مِثْلَهَا And they have not done something like this What you are doing ثُمَّ رَجَعَ فَلَمْ يَجْلِسِ And then he went back home And he did not sit with them He did not support them ثُمَّ خَرَجَ ثَانِيَا Then he came back again فَفَعَلَ مِثْلَهَا And then he did the same thing I he warned the people and then he left and it shows that when people are not careful this is what they fall into they thought that the day of Arafah is special which is true they thought that this is the day that dua is, a, dua is a special which is true but for who? for the Hujjaj only for the Hujjaj so they transferred what is in Arafah in their hometown if something is, in, is, is meant to be done in a specific place, we cannot transfer it. And this is a hujja against those people who, after praying the eighth prayer, they say, I sent my udhiyya back home, or I sent my udhiyya somewhere else. No, your udhiyya is supposed to be in your hometown, where you are. Where you prayed your eighth prayer, this is where you slaughter. But you're transferring it here and there, bila hujja. This is for sure a bidah, a huge bidah that is being propagated just because everybody says there is nothing wrong in it, there is nothing wrong in it. Imam Ibn Raddah, he also mentions on the authority of Ibn Aoun, and then he becomes, brings others, other author, reports from the other great scholars of the past. Qala shahidtu Ibrahim al-Nakha'i, su'ila an ijtima'i nas ashiyyati arafa, ashiyyati arafa. The people asked Ibrahim al-Nakha'i, one of the great scholars, about gathering in the evening of the day of Arafah. فَكَرِيهَهُ And he disliked it. And this karaha in the old istilah means tahreem, prohibited. They didn't just dislike it, they used to consider this haram because they used to consider this bid'ah. وَقَالْ And Ibrahim al Nakhai said, مُحْدَثْ This is a newly invented matter. This is a newly invented matter. And this uh, uh, narration of Ibn, uh, the author of Ibrahim, Ibrahim al Nakhai, the muhaqqiq, he said, Isnad hu sahih. The Isnad is authentic. On the authority of Al A'mash, Al A'mash, he reported Abu Wa'il, 
would not come to the masjid in the evening of Al-Arafah. Why? Because he would not support this type of people. So it shows that they were doing these things. Also the isnad of this information is sahih as has been mentioned by the muhaqqib. Wa rawa aydan an Sufyan, and so, and it is also uh, reported on the authority of Sufyan, I, I, I think it is Sufyan al-Thawri, qala, laysat arafa illa bi Makkah. He said arafa is not anywhere except it's in Makkah. So when are you gathering in the masjid to make dua? Your hometown is not Arafah. So that's why he said Arafah is not anywhere. It's not in your hometown. It is only in Makkah. Laysa fi hadil amsar Arafah. And he said in these towns where people are gathering and doing this bid'ah, there is no Arafah. So if there is no Arafah here, then why are you gathering and making this special dua? Okay. Uh, also Imam Turtushi, Imam Turtushi is one of the great scholars from the Andalus. Okay, from Spain, which is now Spain, and he was born in the town Turtush. Turtush is what is known as Torox now in Spain. As you know, these places were once under the occupation of the Muslims, and huge scholars of the Ahl al Hadith and Ahl al Sunnah were there and they have spread the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And over there, as you know, at that time, the seat of the madhab of Imam Malik was very famous. So, Imam. Turtushi, whose full name is Abu Bakr ibn al-Walid ibn Khalaf, al-Ma'roof bi Abu Bakr al-Turtushi, or ibn, uh, ibn Abi uh, Runaydiqa, uh, Randaqa, sorry, ibn Abi Randaqa. He died in the year 520 Hijri. This great Imam, al-Turtushi, has a book, al-Hawadith wal Bida. Al-Hawadith wal Bida, meaning the newly invented matters and the innovations. And he discussed here many types of innovations that he found in his time or until his time and he have discussed that. So he reported in his book, Qala Ibn Wahhab, and as you know he was Maliki. So he talks about the Madhab of Imam Malik and the opinion of Imam Malik. Qala Ibn Wahhab, Sa'altu Malikan anil Julusi al Arafa. Ibn Wahhab, one of the students of Imam Malik, he said, I asked Malik about uh, gathering of the day of Arafah. Uh, the people of the town, they gather in their masjid. Okay? And the Imam called upon men to make dua to Allah for people until sunset. So exactly they are following the tradition of the Hujjaj. So Imam Malik said, we do not recognize this. We don't recognize this. This is done by the people of our time. So he basically saying it's an innovation. Also it's reported uh, uh, by Ibn Wahhab, he said, I heard Imam Malik when he was asked about the gathering of the people in the masjid in the evening of Arafah after Asr, uh, and then they're, they're, they're gathering to make dua, he said this is not from the action of the people. Indeed, these are the keys to the matter of invention, innovation. So these are the doors that they are opening to establish lots of innovation. Also it has been reported by, uh, from Imam Malik that he said, I dislike for the people around the world, meaning like in the Afat, in the globe, huh? around the world on the day of Arafah to sit in the masjid to make dua. And for the one whom people gathered around for the dua, meaning a person who around him people gathered in the masjid, so let's make dua, day of Arafah is good, Dua is acceptable, all these things, then let him leave the masjid. And his standing at home is better, as more beloved to me. Meaning, like he stays at home and he does his own ibadah, this is better for me than gathering in the masjid with the people and do this kind of innovation. And Imam Turtush also reports, Kuntu ara Layth ibn Sa'ad, yansarif ba'ad al Asri wa Mu'arafa. Layth ibn Sa'ad, one of the great Imams of Hadith and a contemporary of Imam Malik ibn Anas. رضي الله عنه ورحمة and Layth ibn Sa'ad was in Egypt he said uh, uh, he used to leave the masjid after on the day of Arafah after Asr فَلَا يَرْجَى إِلَّا قُرْبِ الْمَغْرِبِ and he would not return back to the masjid until very close to the Maghrib time meaning he would avoid all of this innovation that was happening widespread while the Imams of the Ahlul Sunnah such Imam, great Imams like Malik and Laith ibn Sa'ad and in the time of the Tabi'i, they were warning them continuously. So these are the innovators who are very bold. So you will hear many masjids nowadays, they will say, 
or it is the the best day, ten days. Let's gather and do, uh, 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 you know, qiyamul layl, and let's do this and let's do that because it is this, it is that. We cannot legislate and such kind of practices. We are not saying qiyamul layl is not allowed. It is allowed, but do it on your own. But to gathering people and to do it especially for your muarafa or because it is the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, as many of the masajid they do, they are basically following this kind of people who used to do this kind of innovations and the ulama of the hadith and the ulama of the sunnah they warned and they wrote books against them clarifying their mistakes then Imam Turtushi he said very beautiful statement he said no may Allah have mercy upon you these great scholars they knew the virtues of dua on the day of Arafah meaning they knew that the, the dua is very virtuous but they knew that this was for a certain place meaning it is for Arafah and it was not f meant for another place other than that place so basically what was supposed to be done in Arafah they transferred that to their hometown so he's saying that now don't say because you know one of the traditional answer of the people saying are you telling me that making dua to, to Allah is bida? they will, they will, they will qu question no it is not making dua to Allah is not bida. It is the day of Arafah, let's say, and you want to make dua. Not because it is the day of Arafah, but because it is one of the great days and you will make dua like you will make dua any other day, that's fine. Nobody said it is bid'a. But this kind of specific specification of a dua, because it is Arafah, it is this, 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 this is what the ulama, they have warned against. And then when the she said, and they did not forbid for the one who isolated to com contemplate with a truthful intention in his heart to make dua. So, for example, I want to, uh, you know, uh, 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 choose uh, uh, a, my room. I go to the room away from people and I want to focus to make lots of dua. Is this a bid'ah? No, it's not. As long as I'm not doing this because it is the day of Arafah or this is a special day. Okay? So, it is not a bid'ah. So, he's saying that they are not warning against that but what they disliked is the newly invented matter and the commoners will think that it is from the sunnah on the day of Arafah for all the people around the globe to gather and make dua and the matter will escalate until this innovation will enter the religion and it, it, this matter this action will be part of the will be made to look like the part of the religion and it is not part of our glorious religion أو كما قال إمام الترتوشي رحمه الله تعالى رحمة واسعة. Then he said, and I was in Beit al-Maqdis. Imam al-Turtushi now talks about him. He said, I was in Beit al-Maqdis. This is Masjid al-Aqsa. And when it was the day of Arafah, and look how when people do bid'ah, there's the ulama, they say bid'ah has kurun. In one generation they do something, another generation they add more, add more until it becomes huge. He said, I was in yeah, uh, Baitul Maqdis and on the day of Arafah I found out lot of people of the town they gathered in Masjid Al-Aqsa they stayed in the Masjid facing the Qibla raising their voice and making dua as if it is the place of Arafah and I heard them saying openly like you know proclaiming the one who stands in Baitul Maqdis this type of gathering four times meaning he gets opportunity to do it four years consecutive or in a lifetime four years he get four, four times he does this kind of uh, mawqif in 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 in, in uh, masjid al-aqsa this is equivalent to hajj and they have made this four times standing in masjid al-aqsa on the day of arafah making dua as anybody does it then for him the obligation of the Hajj is being lifted so they used to abandon Hajj making Hajj going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so shaitan deviated them by making them look at something good which is making dua on the day of Arafah in Arafah then he made them do it in Masjid al-Aqsa so they used to travel to Masjid al-Aqsa to make this dua on the day of Arafah and if they do it four years like that then they said that the obligation of the Hajj has been lifted from us. What is the evidence? Just the tradition of the people. Qila wa 
Akama kala imam turtushi Rahmatullahi alaihi rahmatan wasya Warawahu imam al-bayhaqi Fi sunanihi imam al-bayhaqi One of the great imams of the hadith He has the sunan al-bayhaqi Which is one of the sunan al-bayhaqi Kitab al-hajj The book of the hajj Bab al-ta'rif bi ghayri arafa Gathering Ta'rif means gathering in the masjid of the local town He said al-ta'rif bi ghayri arafa To gather in the masjid To make dua Not in arafa In a place other than arafa and he brings the, uh, the narration of Shu'ba who said that Al-Hakam and Al-Hammad was asked about the gathering of the people of the day of Arafah in the masjid and both of them said these are newly invented matters and similar was reported on the authority of Ibrahim al nakhai Rahimahullahu Ta'ala Then the two great Imams, Imam Ibn Abi Shayba and Imam Abdul Razzaq Al-San'ani both of them in, in their Musannaf they have reported such narrations prohibiting the ta'rif of bid'ah of the ta'rif or the bid'ah of mu'arraf Imam Ibn Abi Shaiba I'm not gonna mention so many things because it will become long I'm just gonna mention the Musannaf Ibn Abi Shaiba uh, the Musannaf is one of the book of uh, Imam Abu Bakr Ibn Abi Shaiba and Abu Bakr Ibn Abi Shaiba is one of the teachers of Imam Al Bukhari this book is a collection of the statements and the actions of the of course there are some hadith there but mostly he collected the statements and the actions of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the scholars of Al-Islam until his time and that's why this known book is known as the Musannaf okay and in his book he has the chapter Fi Fi Tarif Bab Fi Tarif Man Qala Laysa Illa Bi Arafa the chapter of a Tarif meaning gathering to make dua and those who say Laysa illa bi Arafa. This cannot be done except in Al Arafa. Okay. First, he brings the statement of Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah taala, and this is very important to focus the first two narrations because these are the narrations of the Sahaba. The first narration is Hassan al Basri. He said that the first one who started the Tarif or the gathering people in the Masjid is Abdullah ibn Abbas the Turjuman in Quran or the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu in Al-Basra okay however the chain of the narration is not authentic because Hassan Al-Basri first of all is Mudallis Rahima Rahimahullah and second he did not meet Abdullah ibn Abbas and he did not narrate from him so the Muhakkik of the, this book uh, the, the uh, uh, Musannaf he mentioned that the chain of narration is not authentic and also I checked this with my teacher Shaykh Hassan he also mentioned that this is not authentic on the authority of Abdul Ibn Abbas. So, a lot of people, when they're talking about the Bida of Ta'rif, a lot of the Mashaykh, they say that Abdul Ibn Abbas did it. First of all, we have no narration to say Abdul Ibn Abbas did it. And if you go to all of the reports that claim that Abdul Ibn, Abdul Ibn Abbas did Ta'rif, it shows that basically, although the narrations are not authentic, but it shows that he was giving a class on the day of Arafah and he was making the tafsir of Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran. So even if the hadith is authentic or the author is authentic, Abdul ibn Abbas didn't gather people because it is Arafah. But he gathered people to teach them like he gathers people, used to gather people to teach on other days. So if somebody does that, then this is not a bidah or we cannot say he is doing ta'rif, he is doing a bidah. We cannot say that. But, but to attribute this to Abdul ibn Abbas, not authentic, not correct. Then he brings the next narration on the authority of Musa ibn Abi Aisha, on the authority of Amr ibn Khuwairith. Amr ibn Khuwairith is one of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu from Sigar al-Sahaba. His narration is in Sahih al-Bukhari, sorry, Sahih Muslim, not Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. And this narration says, uh, Musa ibn Abi Aisha, he said, I saw Amr ibn Khuwairith giving khutbah on the member and people gathered around him. Meaning he was giving khutbah on the member, talk on the member, uh, on the pulpit, on the day of Arafah, and people were listening to him. And this chain of narration, the muhakkik, he said, la ba'sabihi, there is no problem. Okay, so now, some people might say, a sahaba did that. We say, no, a sahaba did not do this kind of dua, all these things. A sahaba, first of all, if they really did something like this, which if this narration is truly authentic, really authentic to uh, 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 Amr ibn Khawadif, radiallahu anhu, then he did it like anybody else does good deeds on any other days. 
Nobody said that you cannot go to the masjid and then you, cannot, you cannot teach people on the day of Arafat. It is a bidah. Nobody said that. What they said is if you do it because it is Arafah, because it is Arafah you are gathering people, then there is a problem here. That's what they said. So to say that the bidah of Tarif is allowed because a Sahaba did it, no, they didn't do it. First of all, it is not authentic from Abdul ibn Abbas. Second, the narration about uh, Amr ibn Khulayrik, as you can see, this is just a talk that he gave. It has nothing to do with the bidah of standing and making dua and claiming that if you do it four times and hajjis uh, become optional for you. All of this has nothing to do with their action. Then uh, uh, Imam uh, Ibn Abi Shayba, he reported on the authority of Al-A'mash that he said, I saw Abu Wa'il sitting and talking to the people like he did on any other day. Meaning he was sitting and talking to the people on the day of Arafah between Asr and Maghrib and he was doing this like he did it any other day. And the narration in uh, the book of Ibn Waddah, what did he say? He said that Abu Wa'il used to leave, ho leave the masjid and he would come uh, he would not he, do, he would not attend and when he was asked he said it is muhtaf and all that I believe that's what the narration says let me just double check the narration in Ibn Waddah's book it says that one second so I, I don't misquote it yeah Abu Wail wouldn't come to the masjid in the evening of the Arafah. This was reported by A'mash. In the Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, A'mash reported that he used to sometimes, he saw him sitting and talking to people, maybe giving classes, and that's fine, because he is not gathering people. It's just he is there, he prayed, and he is giving talk to the people. That is absolutely fine. Ibn Abi Shayba also reported other, uh, I'm going to quickly mention, Shu'aba said, I asked Hamad and Al-Hakam about the gathering in the evening of Arafah, they said this is a newly invented matter. And we mentioned this before. Sha'bi Ibrahim Ibn al Hanafiya. All of them they said Al Mu'arraf huh, bi Makkah. Al Mu'arraf can be only done in Makkah. Makkah. Meaning you can do that gathering only in Makkah for Hajj. In Namal, and also they used to say in Namal Mu'arrafu bi Makkah. Indeed the Mu'arraf is in only in Makkah. It cannot be done in any other town. Al Hakam and Amir said Al Mu'arraf bid'ah. Al Mu'arraf Bida. Which Mu'arraf? The Mu'arraf that the people do there in their hometown. Ibn Sirin, this is Muhammad Ibn Sirin and Hassan, Hassan al Basri, did not used to attend the masjid in the evening of Arafah. And I found it to be very strange that when some of the ulama and some of the teachers they are talking about the Bida of Arafah, they are saying that Abdullah ibn Abbas did it. He is the one first who started it, which is not correct to say. Except one of the Sheikh, I, I was uh, I listened to him, mashallah, when he mentioned about the, the author of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, La yasah. It's not authentic. May Allah reward him for that. And to say that Hassan al Basri used to support this, no, Hassan al Basri did not used to support this. In fact, in the Musannaf ibn Abdul Razak, when they asked Hassan al Basri, he said, No, don't do it. And he would not attend this kind of gathering. So we cannot attribute these things to these great Imams without an authentic text or an evidence okay so let's summarize and let's try to extract some benefit practically for our time so we see that the Prophet ﷺ never did anything in his town copying the Hujjaj on the day of Arafah there is nothing authentically reported from the Sahaba the report of Abdullah ibn Abbas about he did Ta'rif or Mu'arraf is not authentic and even if it was authentic it only claims that he was teaching people. Like it is reported if the hadith what the muhakkik said is authentic about Amr ibn Khuwairith that he was giving a talk to the people. That is absolutely fine because they did not do this because it is day of Arafah. They did it because they used to teach people and that was part of the teaching. Uh, the Salaf, those of the Salaf who did sit between Asr and Maghrib and give some talk and this and that, they did it only because it was part of their habit to teach people and it happened that they did this on the day of Arafah as we have mentioned. It's clear that this Buddha of Ta'rif started from the time of the Tabi'i and the vast majority of the scholars opposed him, opposed them. And the Ta'rif was done in different ways. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Thaymiyyah and many of them, those who have spoken against this, they said the people used to sometimes travel to a certain land to the grave of a certain righteous person and they would stand around the grave on the day of Arafah and dua. This is one type of ta'arib, of course this is haram without any doubt. 
the other type of tarif which Imam Turtushi mentioned that they used to travel all the way to Masjid al-Aqsa now traveling to Masjid al-Aqsa is not a problem but traveling to Masjid al-Aqsa to do bid'ah is haram forbidden the only thing that you're supposed to do is to travel to Masjid al-Aqsa is to pray there not to commit bid'ah so they used to do that and all of these are as you can see clearly forbidden by the ulama of Ahl sunnah now the question remains is what if if somebody wants to go and make dua his personal dua between asr and maghrib in the masjid is this allowed imam malik he did not allow this imam abu hanifa did not allow this it is said that when they asked this to imam ahmed imam ahmed said la ba sabihi he said he doesn't see any problem in it because abdullah ibn abbas used to do tarif and we know that abdullah ibn abbas didn't used to do that and when imam ahmed was asked do you do that he said no i don't do it so as you can see that the safest thing is not to do these kind of things however the ulama clarifies that if somebody goes for asr prayer on the day of arafah and he wants to wait until the maghrib prayer not because it is day of arafah but it just happens that it, he wants to wait for another prayer is this allowed for sure and if he is there in the masjid can he make dua yes he can and can he read quran yes he can as long as he is not doing this because it is arafah because it's a special time and he's trying to follow the tradition of the hujjat so please do understand the difference between this and that and that finally please remember my brothers and sisters with all of this discussion we are not saying that dua on the day of arafah if it happens tomorrow is the day of arafah we want to make dua at any time it is allowed at any time it is allowed as long as we are not doing it because it is day of arafah number one and please remember that if you're fasting tomorrow is actually one of the best time to make dua not because it is the day of Arafah, but because we are fasting. Because we have the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that the dua is accepted from three people. And one of the person is a fasting person until he breaks his fast. Until he or she breaks his fast. For such people, of course they should make dua. So please do not misunderstand when we talk about with the other people saying everything is wrong, everything is incorrect, you cannot do anything. No. It is we are talking about when people specify certain things for a specific reason and do it every single year thinking this is this this is that when there is no evidence for that of course it turns into muhdath or in newly invented matters and the prophet said bid'a." all the new invented matters will lead to innovation and all bid'a and all innovation will lead to misguidance and all misguidance will lead to hellfire. Just think about these people who in the time of Imam Turtushi he saw that they were boldly going to Masjid al-Aqsa and they're performing what they performed between Asr and Maghrib and they claimed without hujjah that if anybody does it four years like this in Masjid al-Aqsa for them Hajj is being lifted, obligation of the Hajj is being lifted. If these people die in this kind of doing this kind of sin uh, what would be their situation in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If they died as Muslim we will keep on making dua for them that may Allah forgive them and may Allah guide all of us and all of our brothers and sisters to the Ahl Sunnah way so that we can learn the Quran and the Sunnah and we'll become true Sunni. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.